What's up, guys? Casey Zogelman, a.k.a. the Fourth Sanderson Sister, coming at you with our third Hocus Pocus I Gotta Focus Q&A session where you guys submitted your questions for me, and today I am answering them for you. Um, there were a lot. <laughs> there were a lot. I didn't even count them this time. There were a ton. There were a metric ton of them, and I'm so excited because we got a lot of participation. Granted, it has been six months since we did the last one. Um, I meant to do those kind of starting, like, either bi-monthly or monthly, and then, well, you know, I got busy with Hocus Pocus 2, but now that Hocus Pocus 2 is over, um, we're all kind of on the cool down, and we're, I think we have time to do another one of these, so let's just... Let's have fun. I'm just going to go straight down the thread um, of questions. They're not going to be in any particular order. It's just the way it's set up in the comments. So without further ado, uh, just smash the like button and please subscribe if you haven't and let's answer your questions. All right, so our first set of three questions comes from one of my amazing Discord mods, uh, mainly Monty, uh, but his uh, Discord name was... The Crimson Rose. So these are questions from the Crimson Rose. Will we eventually be able to suggest games that we would like you to like to see you play slash experience on Black Flame gaming streams? Um, first of all, I'm doing Black Flame gaming streams on Saturday nights. If you're not watching, you are really missing out. We have done two sessions so far and they've been a metric ton of fun. We've had so much fun. Um, you totally need to show up and watch those. Uh, the past streams are on my channel. You can go watch those in the Black Flame Gaming playlist. To answer your question, Monty, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I think eventually, probably, I have a long laundry list of ones I want to go through right now. Um, but yes, I think eventually you will be able to suggest games, um, for me to play or at least experience, um, but I'm going to go on and tell you right now, there are some I will probably veto because I am a chicken. Uh, I do plan on playing the Supermassive uh, Dark Pictures Anthology games, which are scary, but I have watched those. And they're like choose-your-own-adventure stories, and I love choose-your-own-adventure stories. Like, these are these are fun for me. They, they scare the bejesus out of me sometimes, but they are great. I am a chicken, so if you guys are like, hey, could you play The Last of Us or something like that? No. <laughs> if it involves zombies... No. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Um, so no. <laughs> but yes, eventually you will be able to um, suggest games. Uh, it's just not yet because we're still getting the streams off the ground. But those are 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Saturday nights on this channel. You 100% need to come to the streams. They are so much fun. We have so much fun. Right now we're playing Pokemon Dark Violet and everybody in the comments has had, or in the chat, not the comments, in the chat has had so much fun writing Sarah Sanderson's Pokemon journey with me. It's been a blast. All right, so Monty's second question. If you were to have a formal dinner with your favorite characters, what would you serve? Ooh, okay. You and I are both are foodies. We, we've talked extensively about this in Discord, which if you're not part of the Discord, you need to go join our Discord, um, the Sanderson Cottage. Um, I'm such a foodie. But, like, if I'm having, like, a formal dinner party with all my favorite peeps, so that would be, like, the Sanderson sisters, Bellatrix Lestrange, Angelique Bouchard from Dark Shadows, Julia Hoffman from Dark Shadows, um... The Witch from Into the Woods, not the crappy uh, Meryl Streep version, the Bernadette Peters version, because that's the only version I will recognize ever. Um, <laughs> and maybe Hannah Waddingham's, but I never get to see her play it. Like, that's just a handful of the characters I would want. Um, I would definitely be making my uh, stuffed turkey roulade. I love doing that. It's um, turkey breast pounded out flat that I season um, with uh, poultry seasoning and adobo. Um, and garlic powder, big time. I'm Italian, garlic is my blood. <laughs> um, and then I stuff it with homemade dressing, or stuffing at that point. And you put that on a big old lattice uh, sheet of bacon. So you do it, you weave the, la uh, the lattice uh, pattern through bacon. You roll all that up, tie it off with string, and bake it until it's done. Holy crap, it's good. I would serve that. I would probably serve my collard greens, because I make really good collard greens. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna brag, but I make really good collard greens. Um, I would probably have some of my homemade dressing on the side, because, it, it, again, it's my memo's recipe. You can't go with, me can't go wrong with memo's recipe. It's amazing. Um, and probably homemade, uh, macaroni, because I'm good at that. 
Um, but yeah, it would be more like a Southern comfort thing. Just be like, experience my, experience my stuff. Uh, if it wasn't that, I would definitely be serving my, uh, Papaw's, um, pasta sauce, which I can't tell you guys anything about that because that is a secret family recipe. None of you will ever get that out of me. <laughs> um, so yes, that, that would be the two different meals I would do. And the last question from Monty is, what does being a Slytherin mean to you? My Slytherin bro. Um... I'm actually wearing my Slytherin lounge pants right now. You can you can kind of see them, um, which is uh, so that's kind of funny uh, that you would pose that question. Um, a lot of people associate Slytherin with bad guys. I and understandably so because a lot of bad guys were in Slytherin. But <clears throat> for me, it's the like the big traits are loyalty and cunning and ambition. I have ambitions, but they're not like. I'm gonna take over the world. I would very much like to make this YouTube channel successful. I think we're already doing that. It is already pretty successful. But I'd like to make it even more successful with you guys. Um, that's one of my ambitions. I would love to be a writer someday. I'm working on a novel. Um, it's kind of on the back burner because, again, everything that happened over the last year with Hocus Pocus 2 kind of took precedence, especially on this channel. I would like to do that. One of my ambitions is to freaking move out of my house so I can go get my own place. Like, the ambition is just to do good in life for me. And it, being a Slytherin, it helps because it's like, oh, I have these ambitions and I can focus on them. But I'm also s extremely loyal to the people that I love. Um, <laughs> screw me once, shame on you. Screw me twice, shame on me. Shame on me. You don't get a third chance. <laughs> I'm one of those people um, who... <sighs> Do you burn the bridge and we're going to have to rebuild it very slowly over time. I'm talking like no nail guns, hammer and nails, one little two by four at a time. But being, being Slytherin just means that we can be ambitious while ha with our goals. We can also be extremely loyal to our friends. Um, I don't consider myself very cunning unless it's like, <sighs> I don't know. I just don't consider myself very cunning at all, really. Um, I do what I can, but, um, I don't know. It's just, it means a lot to me because I think Slytherins have already, always gotten a bad light. And I grew up loving villains more than I did heroes. Otherwise, would I have this channel? No. Um, because the Sanderson sisters were my heroes from young four-year-old age. Uh, I think it's really helped me see both sides of people, too. It's like, I can see the bad side, but I can also see the good side of people. But I love being a Slytherin. I just I just love being a Slytherin. It's, all of that is what Slytherin means to me. So thank you very much, uh, Mainly Monty, for those amazing questions. Can't wait to see you in the Discord. Um, you're awesome. Love you, buddy. All right, so moving right along to one of my number one fans on this channel. These questions were posed by Lewis Breland. Um, I hope I said your last name right, buddy. <laughs> All right. So, Lewis says, Excellent rules. As a teacher of young children myself, I am completely on board with laying down the law first thing. Haha. <laughs> well, thank you. I have to put out rules because last time we had somebody asking some very inappropriate questions. And I did not find it amusing. <clears throat> The following questions are all about possibilities. We like to look forward and cherish the past while enjoying the present. Oh, yes, you're right. All right, so the first question is a direct question. Should Bet, Kathy, and Sarah record a Halloween-themed Sanderson Sisters Salem Halloween Bash al album in the way most established singers record Christmas season albums? I needed it yesterday. <laughs> I needed it yesterday. Shut up and take my money. Like, I think... Sorry, I'm sucking on a cough drop. Um, <clears throat> I think it, they could do it for Bet's charity that she does every year, her New York Restoration Project. If they were to, like, record that and then sell it for a limited amount of time for her, um, for her charity, holy crap, they would make so much money for that charity. Again, shut up and take my money. Like, let's do this. I want, I want that. <laughs> I want covers of all different songs done in Halloween version by the Sanderson Sisters. Let's go. Yes, they should absolutely do that. <clears throat> Number two, either or. I already know your answer to this one, but would love for you to discuss this with everyone. If and only if there is a third Hocus Pocus film, should it focus more on the sisters' backstory with Taylor, Nina, and Juju, and obviously Hannah Waddingham, 
Or should it focus on Whitney Belissa and Lilia and Lilia or Lila, Lila? I don't know how to say her name. As Becca, Izzy, and Cassie. Prequel. <laughs> Prequel. Taylor, Nina, and Juju. All the way. Not that I didn't like the new guys. Again, I don't hate the new kids. But I'd much rather, 100% much rather, watch a prequel. <laughs> like, I'd much rather watch a prequel. But if they have to make a third Hocus Pocus film and they decide not to do a prequel, they should freaking do the plot line that I laid out for them because it's the only one I think that would work. So you guys can watch my pitch meeting for that by clicking on this thing right here. Um, but yes, prequel. Uh, last, last question is, do you think an animated short series voiced by the originals... Very good. Combined with musical numbers would be a success for Disney. It's debatable. Because as soon as you put something in animation, people are automatically going to assume it's just for little dudes. Um, that's what happened in the Clone Wars. A lot of pe I love the Clone Wars. But a lot of people I know are like, oh, well, it's animated. I can't watch that. It's probably so dumbed down and childish. No, it wasn't, people. So, like, animation, I don't think would be a terrible idea. You'd have to get some really good artists in there, because if I get... Look. <laughs> I was excited about the illustrated version of Hocus Pocus coming out until I saw that artwork and saw how they straight up disrespected Mary. Bruh. And I was just like, no. No, no, no. Um, so... They'd have to have a really, really good animator who doesn't straight up disrespect the Sanderson sisters like that. Um, so, yes and no. I think it would be good in the fact that we would get more of our original girls. And I think it would be easier on them to do it voice acting wise. But at the same time, Hocus Pocus has never really been an animated property. Unless you talk about like that short-lived thing, The Brew. Um... I don't know. I think it all depends. That one's kind of a toss-up. It could go one way, it could go the other way. I don't know. I think I think it would be okay, but we would really run the risk of it being just too kitty. Okay, thank you as always for taking the time to interact with your fans. That, amongst many, many others, is the reason I enjoy visiting your channel. You are appreciated and loved. Lewis, you're one of my favorite people on this channel. You make me smile every time you comment. Like... I love you, buddy. Thank you for being here. All right, next up is Karsten a la acapella. Um, number one, do you think Cobweb was also secretly the mother witch? Um, she guided Becca to the book and also found another black flame candle. Um, hmm. I'm gonna have to say probably not for the simple fact that we got so much of the bird imagery in present day, too. Like, she was flying overhead over um, Becca at the beginning of the movie, and she was following them at the end. I'm gonna say probably not. Um, I think Cobweb was just a very intelligent cat. So, yeah, I think, Cob again, Cobweb was just a cat. But, good thought. It, but I, I just gotta say no. Number two, if you were cast in Hocus Pocus 1 or 2, which character would you have played? I would probably be in 2, and I probably would have ended up being either Izzy or Becca. <laughs> but probably Izzy, because I act a lot like Izzy. <laughs> a lot like Izzy. <laughs> Alright, number three, if the Sanderson sisters would meet the Charmed Ones, how would their relationship be to each other? I have a very, very limited knowledge of Charmed. Very limited, because <laughs> I have never watched it all the way through. I caught a couple episodes when mom watched it when I was a kid, but from the limited knowledge I have, I don't think it would be good. <laughs> I don't think they would have a good relationship. It would be very bad. They would, they would probably be rivals and it probably wouldn't, wouldn't be very good. <laughs> um, so thank you, Karsten. Those were good questions. Um, coming up. All right. Our returning friend, uh, Solo Winters has the next three. Number one, is there anything you'd change about Hocus Pocus 2? One, Make Becca believe in magic more. <laughs> that was my biggest issue with Becca. Like, Whitney did great. Whitney did great. She played a good character. Becca just needed to be tweaked a little. She needed to believe in magic more. <laughs> and that is a character thing. She needs to believe in magic more. Um, number two. Billy and Winifred's backstory. I am okay with them just having shared one kiss in the graveyard. But was it a dare? 
Did he do it of his own free will? Where the heck does Sarah fit into this? <laughs> I'm still mad about that last thing. I... That's the other thing I would change is I need that to be more fleshed out. That it, That is... If I had to sacrifice the other thing and then I wanted more Billy and Gilbert romance because they promised me that. But if I had to sacrifice those two things just to get more backstory, I would do it. <laughs> like, I need more backstory. That is what I would change. Um, number two, if you were a witch, what would your name be and what spells would you use? I think I've answered this one a couple of times. My name would be Cassandra and I would be an ice caster. Um, number three, what's your favorite TV show and movie, not including Hocus Pocus and any of the Harry Potter movies? Good on you for, uh, for shooting that part down. Because <laughs> I, I, I 100% would have answered that. Um, TV show is actually really hard because I watch a lot of sitcoms. I watch TV shows more than I watch movies. But a lot of times I have them on for background noise. I think my favorite TV show would have to be Golden Girls. Like, it used to be Friends, but then I started watching Golden Girls, and I love Golden Girls so much more now. <laughs> like, Golden Girls is amazing. Everybody in that show is amazing. It is my favorite show. Uh, followed very closely by Hot in Cleveland, which also has Betty White in it, um, which is very similar tone to the Golden Girls. Both of those are great, but definitely Golden Girls is my favorite. As for movie, I'm gonna have to say the uh, 1970s Pete's Dragon. I know that's another Disney movie, but it is like... It was my second favorite movie, but then Hocus Pocus 2 came along and bumped it down to number three. So it's my third favorite movie. <laughs> so I really like Pete's Dragon. That's my other one. All right. Thank you for those questions, Solo Winters. All right. These come from... This one, it's just one, comes from Zoe. Question, what do you think of the new Hocus Pocus Squishmallows, and will you be getting one? Um, I think they're cute, but, um, I don't know. We don't really get them around here, um, but I think they're cute. If somebody were to get them for me, I wouldn't say no. Um, I don't know that I would seek them out myself, though, because I've, I've never been big on the Squishmallow things, especially the people ones. The people ones just look weird, um... So, I mean, they're cute. I would get them. I would, I would take them if somebody were to get them to me. I wouldn't say no. Um, you have Winnie's and you're trying to get Mary and Sarah's in the future. Love your videos, by the way. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Zoe. I'm trying very hard. <clears throat> All right. Another returning questioner. Um, Linda Clark has the next three. Number one, what would the new characters Hogwarts houses be? Uh, ah, <laughs> I've got to analyze this on the spot. Oh, boy. Um, hmm, 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 that, that was some shrewd and cunning stuff he pulled off on Becca and Izzy by getting them to light the candles. I'm going to give Gilbert, um, he gets, he gets Slytherin. I don't know enough about Cassie <laughs> to put her anywhere, um, but she kind of strikes me a little bit as a Gryffindor. I don't know why. Again, I don't know enough about her, so I'm just going to say Gryffindor for now. Um, Becca is probably Ravenclaw, if I had to go. If I had to do it right now, she's a Ravenclaw. But those are the only four I'm really interested in sorting on the spot. Those are, yeah, Izzy is 100% a Hufflepuff. That did not take too much thinking. Gilbert's a Slytherin. Right now, the last two, Cassie and Becca, are Gryffindor and Ravenclaw, respectively. But that was that was not bad for me doing it on the spot. Um, number two, how long do you think were uh, Billy and Sarah were seeing each other before Winnie found out? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm gonna say a while, like several years at least, because if we look at the math, um like I addressed in my Winifred Sanderson character breakdown, which you can watch by clicking on this thing right here. Um, he didn't die until May of 1693. 
So I think those two had to have started up a while ago, because I highly doubt he would have gone for them after they had gotten to the point where they were. Um, so I'm going to say at least a few years, at least a few years before when he found out. Cause like if it had, she's vengeful, but I think it would have been a lesser punishment if it had been a lot less time. If it had been going on for that long, yeah, she po- she definitely would have poisoned him like she did. Um, so I think, I think several years before when he found out. Number three, what's your theory on how the sisters became old hags in 1693 when in 1653 Sarah was a child and Mary and Winnie were teenagers? Here's where history comes in. Because back then, life expectancy was not very old. Um, Life expectancy, I think you were considered old if you hit 50. Like, you were considered an elder if you hit 50. Um, Because the life expectancy back then with the lack of proper nutrition and medicine and etc etc because of all the diseases <laughs> um, you were lucky if you lived to 30 <laughs> so i mean that's 40 years winifred was already 16 so you put 40 on that she was 56 in 1693 um that's old for back then <laughs> That is old for back then. Um, So I think that is what it is. It's just the life expectancy back then as opposed to now um, is why they would have been considered old hags um, is because they they lived far past the life expectancy, which was like 30. So so I think that's what it is. Uh, If I had to give it a give it a go right now. I think it just has to deal with a lot of that. The haggard part is probably just because they were ostracized and, you know, they sold their souls. So there's that too. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I think that's what it is. Those were good questions, Linda. Thank you very much. All right. The next one comes from Megan Strickland. Um, And they write, man, all these questions are amazing, but here are mine. Number one. What is your all-time favorite Power Rangers season? Ooh. So for those of you don't, who don't know, I am a big Power Rangers nerd. I'm a huge Power Rangers nerd. At least up until the point where Neo save it happened and then we got Samurai and all the... Blah, blah, blah. Blah. <laughs> Neo save it, no good. <laughs> In my opinion. Um, which, by the way, it, we suffered a really big blow in the last week, um, Jason David Frank, who played Tommy, passed away unexpectedly. They have not come out with what happened. TMZ decided to throw around the S word. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and that's what everybody is assuming now, and they're spreading the rumor, but we don't know that that's what happened. And I am still not okay. <laughs> like, I'm still not okay. This this rocked me to my core and it did the same to one of my best friends. Like we were together Saturday night watching the green with evil saga and we were just fighting tears the entire time. Like I would make a joke because I'm just like levity armor. We need to put on the levity armor. Or we're going to start crying. Cause when I got that news, I was really glad nobody was around because I was sobbing and they were ugly sobs. But as it's so Let's just take a moment for Jason David Frank, who has touched so many lives through his roles in Power Rangers and his amazing work with his karate schools and everything. He was he was a he was a stand up guy. He was a stand up guy. Um, so my all time favorite Power Rangers season. It's a tie because there are two there are two I really, 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 really like. It's a tie between Wild Force and Mystic Force. Those two, in my opinion, had some of the best writing, some of the best zords, some of the best gimmicks of the entire franchise. Do I think they are the best seasons? No. (laughs) In Space takes that. In Space was... You can't beat In Space. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, But Wild Force and Mystic Force are absolutely my two favorite seasons. They are kind of like on the same level with each other. I cannot pick between the two of them. They were both 
just so well crafted. The gimmicks were great. The suits were great. The the actors were great. The stories were phenomenal. Like those were two top tier seasons in my humble opinion. <laughs> I love 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 those seasons. Um, so those are my favorites. Number two, do you have a favorite Power Rangers character? Again, it is a tie between Wild Force and Mystic Force. I love Merrick. Merrick uh, Balaton, who was the Lunar Wolf Ranger in Wild Force. Love, 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 love his character. And I'll be honest, I think he's the reason I have a type. He was my very first crush, and I still think he is gorgeous to this day. I love him, but he's also such a very well-written character. He's amazing. I really, really like Merrick. I love Merrick. Um, my other favorite character is the mentor figure from Mystic Force, Udana, because she is one of my favorite rangers ever. The White Mystic Ranger has my favorite suit design ever, and Udana was also a very layered and fun character, and I really, really liked her. So, I, again, I have a tie <laughs> between my two favorite seasons. Those are my two favorite characters. Number three, if you were in a season of Power Rangers, which ranger color would you be? White. I have always wanted to be a white ranger ever since Udana came on screen. And that was even after I saw the Noble Tiger Ranger in Wild Force. I want to be a white ranger. I want to be a white ranger. It is my favorite, 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 favorite iteration. And you know what, Megan? Just for you. Just for you. Because you are a Power Rangers person. I got on a Power Rangers kick recently because I've been reading the Mighty Morphin comics, which are amazing, by the way. If you have not read them, please do. You want mature Power Rangers that treats the series with respect? Holy cow, those are good. Here is my suit design that I would like. This is my custom ranger. This is mine. It's got all the fantasy weapons I would want on it. It's got my lightsaber. It's got my own little spell book. It's got my wand in a wand strap. Um... I really, really like that. And you know what? Because I was bored and I had the paper, I designed some for the Sanderson sisters too. So you guys now know how big of a nerd I am. <laughs> um, I designed these because I was bored and I was on a Power Rangers kick and I had colored pencils. So there you go. Megan, that's just for you. You should know how special you are because I had no intention of showing these off to the world. <laughs> um, but there you go. So, yes, I I want to be a white ranger. White, white is the color I would want. It is the color I have always dreamed of having. Um, white ranger. <laughs> so, thank you very much for those. Hope you like my questions. Yes, I know they are all Power Rangers questions, but being a Power Rangers fan myself, I couldn't resist. No, it was a lot of fun to discuss. Um, I love rangers, and I don't have enough friends who are into rangers. Um, they're great. So thank you, thank you for those. All right, the next one's come from El Jolie. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your last name. I'm so sorry. So, L, these are from you. <laughs> Number one, do you know how to knit or crochet? I do not. Um, I was shown several years ago, and I just could not get the hang of it. I do have a loom that I work with, so I do some weaving every now and then when the mood hits me. Um, I do like doing that. Um... Number two, have you ever baked chocolate chip cookies? From scratch, no. I wish. From cookie dough, yes. <laughs> Wait, did I do it one year from scratch? Actually, that's a lie. I did do it one year from scratch. It was several years ago because I'm not really good at baking, but they actually turned out okay. Um, but yes, I did, and I, I really like it. Uh, number three, does your family cook for Thanksgiving or do they order takeout? Oh, we cook. Oh, honey, we cook. I go to two different ones. One on my dad's side of the family. We all go over to his side on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And then on the actual day of Thanksgiving, we go to my uncle's house. Uh, there During the pandemic, I got to make Thanksgiving for the first time all by myself. And oh my God, it was an amazing experience. And I want to do it again. It's so much fun. I love doing it. I love cooking. We cook. We cook. <laughs> we cook hard, and it's great. So thank you for those questions. All right, the next one's come from Hazel Dreams 2003 Hi, I'm new to your channel, and I just love your videos. Your love of Hocus Pocus is so sweet and a joy to watch. Oh, and I just ordered a Binks plushie yesterday. Can't wait for him to get here. All right, well, I hope you have it by now. Um, And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Your support means the world to me. 
Um, my three questions are, number one, who is your favorite Hocus Pocus character besides the Sanderson sisters? Very good, very good sidestep. Well, now that we have two movies in this universe, as much as I know he annoyed people, I'm gonna have to say, besides the Sanderson sisters, it's Gilbert. Like, Gilbert's my boy. I was watching, I was watching his parts for the first time, and I was just like, that's me. I didn't know I was in this movie. Um, Gilbert's our token fanboy, and I love him so, so much. I love him so much. <laughs> Gilbert's my boy. Um, regular Hocus Pocus, though, gotta give it to Max. Gotta give my shout out to Max. He's great. All right, number two. Do you have any Hocus Pocus ships, canon or non-canon? Sarah and Billy. That is the only one. And it's only because I don't have any answers. I just have more questions and no answers. <laughs> I just want answers. But yes, Billy and Sarah. Um, number three. Do you have a favorite Binks the Cat scene? That is a good question. Um, hmm. I gotta think. Hang on. I think it's his monologue in the graveyard where he calls Max an airhead. Like, I love that. I love that scene. Those were good. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel Dreams. All right, these come from B Web. Number one, besides Hocus Pocus 1 and 2, what's your favorite Disney Channel original movie? The Scream Team. If you have not watched The Scream Team, go watch The Scream Team. It has our beloved Mary in it, and she does just as amazing in that movie. Plus, you got Eric Idle and Tommy Davidson and a young Cat Dennings, and the, and the plot's fantastic. My God, go watch The Scream Team. It is my favorite. Number two, favorite mythical slash magic plant slash creature. Um, favorite mythical creature dragon. I love dragons. I've always loved dragons. Dragons are amazing. Um, I love dragons. Number three, I couldn't think of a third question. <laughs> that was funny. Very good. Very good, B-Web. Thank you. All right, these come from KFP. Um, number one, do you think Hocus Pocus 3 would reveal that Billy and John Pritchett were in love and that's the real story Billy once shared? Ah. I'm gonna have to say no, because I think he just wants his name cleared. <laughs> he just wanted his name cleared from how things went down from Winifred. Um, so I'm gonna have to say no. I'm sorry to break your heart, but I really doubt it. You know what I want, though? I want some more clarification on him and Sarah. I know I've said that a lot in this video, but I'm triggered. <laughs> so... Sorry to burst your bubble, but probably not. Number two, if only one of Max, Danny, or Allison could return for Hocus Pocus 3, who would you choose? Danny. I think Danny would be the best one to put in if we could only have one of them because of all the unresolved stuff. Max and Allison could have moved already and have started a family and done things. So, Danny, I think, is the only real, like, wild card in that trio still. So, Danny. Number three, do you believe real witches that can perform spells exist or existed at some point? This is a very, um, this is a dangerous question because I know there are people who are practicing witches out there. Um, so I'm going to say yes, I think they existed at some point. Um, at least. They, they could exist, but that's beyond me. <laughs> um, I gotta be a little careful with how I answer that question, but good question. All right. And thank you very much, KFP. So we're moving right along to Universe Stars, who is always here with some decent questions. Let's see what's going down. Number one, if you had the ability to summon the real Sanderson sisters for the rest of your life, but you must remain single forever, would you do it? My life wouldn't even change in the slightest. <laughs> yes, in a heartbeat, I would do it. You mean I have to be a kindly old spinster lady with my three favorite witches for the rest of my life? Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer for me. Absolutely a no-brainer. I'm 100% doing that. Screw getting married. <laughs> I'm already a kindly old spinster lady. Number two, if you were in the Sanderson family, what would the order be? Winnie must remain the eldest. I'm the youngest, I was adopted. <laughs> I'm the youngest, I was adopted. Um, 
Number three, what would your tech vehicle be like Mary riding vacuums and Roombas and Sarah riding mops and Swiffers? Um. Hmm. Hmm. That's a really good question. I don't know. <laughs> I just finished off my cough drop trying to think of that. Is it weird that I want to say a rake? <laughs> Is it weird that I want to say a rake? I like the idea of a rake. I'm going to go with rake. <laughs> I'm going to go with a rake. So those were fun questions. Thank you. All right. These come from Sanderson Sister Junkie. Um, question one. In Hocus Pocus 2, Winifred couldn't take pack the Magic High Maxima spell even after she tried. So if there is a Hocus Pocus 3, would Winnie still be the most powerful witch? That's a good question. <laughs> um, no, she wouldn't. Because right after that, we got that lovely heartbreaking scene where we lost Sarah and Mary. And Winifred and Becca even said you'd be willing to give up your powers. So Winifred sacrificed those so she could go back to her sisters through the spell. So I'm going to say no, she wouldn't be. Um, which means I think the other two's power-ups would also be gone. I could be wrong. But uh, no, there's no way she still has the Magic Kai Maxima after pulling that <laughs> Uno reverse card. <laughs> um... So, yeah, I don't think so. I think she would be back to just normal Winnie power um, instead of Magic High Maxima Winnie. Which would also nerf Sarah and Mary back to where they were, in my opinion. Um, good question, though. Question two. Between all three Sanderson sisters, Becca, Cassie, Izzy, Max, Danny, and Allison against the Death Eaters, who would win in the battle for Salem, Team Sanderson or Team Voldemort? <laughs> Considering three people on the opposing team are muggles and without magic, maybe not Allison. She might be a witch. I really think she is. Mm. <laughs> I really hate to say this. I really hate to say this. But they would get whooped by the Death Eaters. <laughs> they would get whooped. <laughs> it would just, it would be a bloodbath. Because you only have three experienced witches on Team Sanderson. Which is the Sanderson sisters. Becca, Cassie, and Izzy are still trying to learn how to do this stuff. Max, Danny, and Allison can't do this stuff. Um... So they would be the first line of defense, brrr, dead, <laughs> gone, gone. The Death Eaters would eat them for breakfast. Yet, yeah, I'm sorry, Team Voldemort wins a hundred times over. They would not get out of that alive. <laughs> it would not be pretty. It would not be pretty. It would be very bad. Like, I think it might come down to a showdown between the Sanderson sisters and, like, Voldemort, Bellatrix, and I don't want to give it to Snape because he's not technically a Death Eater. Let's, well, Lucius kind of lost his nerve there at the end. So, Bellatrix, Voldemort, and that's it. <laughs> I can't think of anyone else. <laughs> I know there are others, but I can't think of their names right now. So, those two versus the Sanderson sisters, and I'm sorry you have Bellatrix as an attack dog. <laughs> and then freaking Voldemort. They ain't making it out of that. <laughs> they are not making it out of that. So yeah, Team Voldemort wins. Easily. Question three. Who is more sus at first? Mayor Trask or Severus Snape? Trask. Trask 100% because Snape Snape is very complex. He is a very interesting character. Um, he was 
He was sus in different ways, but that's because we also kind of knew he was playing both sides of the field, so that kind of got ruined for us early on. We didn't exactly know why until the last book. Um, but Trask, because we knew nothing about this guy. I was making assumptions just because I got triggered from his last name because I'm a Dark Shadows fan, and Trask is an evil name in that show. <laughs> um, he was way more sus than Snape. He was so much more sus than Snape because we knew nothing about him. We knew nothing about what he was going to be doing, how he was going to be doing it, etc. Like, it was Trask. It's Trask by a mile. I'm still not convinced he wasn't just a little sus. Like, his character kind of... I loved his character. He was a lot of fun. I enjoyed him. He was very funny, but he was comic relief in a comedy, and it just did it didn't work. It didn't work. I liked him a lot. I love that character, but, like, from a, from a logistic standpoint, he didn't make sense. If he had been the secret villain, he would have made a lot more sense. Or if we had just at least made him a little sus. Like, d he can be an idiot, but make him a little bit smarter than what he was. Like, Trask was more sus. I'm gonna end it there. I could rant for a while. So, <laughs> thank you, Sanderson Sister Junkie, for those questions. Whew. <laughs> All right, moving on. Stranger Things has three questions for me. Number one, favorite show, Golden Girls. Number two, how would you write Hocus Pocus 2? Okay, this, I guess, would technically be a fix it kind of thing um i don't think it needs to be fixed really just some tweaks <laughs> um like i was just saying don't make mayor trask comic relief in a comedy um he's a secret villain he's he's the one that's the big bad behind everything um he could convince he could have been like the influence on um what to do with the Sanderson sisters after Gilbert brought the, uh, tricked them. You can leave that the same, but he could see them find out, be like, oh my God, these are the real Sanderson sisters. Because he was supposed to be, because he's up for re-election. We saw that in Hocus Pocus too. He could be losing in the polls at that point and be like, I gotta find a way to really bring people into my side. What could I do to make Salem even better than it already is? And then he sees the Sanderson sisters and he's like, oh my gosh, if I caught those three, we could use them as the biggest tourist attraction ever. They already draw a crowd. What if I had the real thing? Like, and then you use that and he's kind of the bad guy at that point trying to capture the bad guys but the girls when they find out what he's doing is like no 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 that's cruel and unusual punishment why would you like they're bad guys but this is terrible keeping them locked up in captivity like this like they're zoo animals they're still people like that's how i think i would fix it, it you could fix it that way and it would make a whole lot more sense his character would not be nearly as useless as he was. Again, he was a lot of fun, but if you tweaked that and then you also give us more Sarah and Billy stuff, I need to know um, where that worked. Um, do that. Billy could find out what he's doing and he maybe he helped Reverend Trask or something when he comes back and he's like, hey, you're trying to get rid of him? Yeah, sure. But then he finds out what he's doing and he's like, oh my god, this is terrible. I hate him, but this is terrible. Like, you rally together to defeat the main bad guy. Like, I think that was, I think that would be a good way to do it. That would be how I would write it. Keep everything else the same, but tweak some stuff. Tweak some stuff. Oh, the other thing I would change? Get rid of Mike. Um, get rid of Mike. He don't need to be there. Um, like, I think that would have been a really good way to do it. Um, if you just make, he can still be a bumbling fool, but that could be his act. And then he's doing all of this stuff behind the scenes. It would have made him so much more compelling and it would have made for a heck of a story. So that is how I would write Hocus Pocus 2. Number three, what is my favorite snack? Besides children's sauce. <laughs> Good lord. I work with kids, people. <gasps> Come on. Um, uh, I don't know. It depends on what I'm in the mood for, really. Like, I'm a salty snacker, so I can never go wrong with popcorn. Skinny Pop is, like, my reach for, um, because I'm also 
trying to uh, lose weight. But usually it's Skinny Pop if I need something. That's not too bad. Um, other times if it's more like an indulgence thing, I like to get these um, chocolate cake donut holes from the Kroger in my area. Whew. I could eat a whole box of those things by myself. <laughs> they are so good. So those are my two favorites, really. One's kind of more of an everyday thing, and the other one's like an every once in a while thing. So there you go. That's my favorite snack. Thank you, Stranger Things. Those were good questions. All right. The next ones are from Travis Blackburn. Um, Number one, what is your favorite movie besides Hocus Pocus? Hocus Pocus 2. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was rude. <laughs> Pete's Dragon. 1970s version, not the remake. Um, number two, if you could meet one of the Sanderson sisters, which one would it be and why? <sighs> Only one. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Normally my answer would be Mary. Because um, I think we could have a decent talk. But after Hocus Pocus 2 and seeing that lovely new shade of purple in Sarah... I would love to talk to Sarah. I would love to take her out for a drink and just pick her brain. Like, I would like to have a conversation with Sarah after Hocus Pocus 2. Because you know, she grew a backbone at the end of that movie. I'm just kind of like, so why'd you stop? <laughs> um, like, I would love to take her out for, for a glass of wine or something. Like, let's, uh, yeah. Let's, let's talk to, let's talk to Sarah. Let's, let's say Sarah this time. Um... Again, normally my answer would be Mary, but, like, I need to know some more. What's going on in that little blonde brain of hers? Let's, let's go with Sarah this time. Number three, favorite Disney villain. <sighs> the sarcasm in me really just wants to... <laughs> my favorite Disney villains are the Sanderson sisters, but if you're, if you're talking animated and not in general... Um, which a lot of people use that term for the animated villains and not the live action villains. Um, Yzma. <laughs> Yzma is my favorite animated Disney villain. I love Yzma. She is the best. She is amazing. There is nothing wrong with Yzma. I love her so much. She is my favorite animated Disney villain. Favorite Disney villain ever, though, the Sanderson sisters. <laughs> um, but yes, Yzma is my girl. Okay. So thank you very much, Travis. Those were great questions. Ooh, we got two more sections to go. All right, so Mario and Shadow Puppets, another one of our Discord regulars, who's one of our mid-tier mods um, over on Discord. Again, if you haven't joined our Discord, go join our Discord. We're not really active during the day because a lot of us work. Um, a lot of us work and go to school, but at night it's a lot more fun. All right, so their questions. Number one, do you think Mother Witch was expecting Winnie to do the Magic Eye Maximus Bell? After she was immediately enticed by it, I think she gave her the warning because she's like, yeah, you're going to do that one of these days, aren't you? Um, so, yes and no. I think she was expecting her to, but she was trying to dissuade her from doing that, and she thought maybe by making her promise, and I guess through all the time they spent together. Um that we didn't see. <laughs> Prequel! <clears throat> uh, she, she probably didn't expect it after a while, but preemptively she was like, ooh, you went to that too quickly. So maybe. I think that's a maybe. Um, number two, if you could create a spell, what would it be and why? Well, as I am lazy by nature. <laughs> um, if I could get something that would just, it, it just... My spell would be to clean my house and my room just so I don't have to do it again because I'm lazy by nature. If I could just wave my hand, my laundry put itself away, my floor gets cleaned up, all that stuff, I'd be very, very happy. <laughs> that is the spell I would invent, a cleaning spell, because again, I am lazy by nature. <laughs> Number three, why do you think Winnie never listens to Sarah? Um, because of the bad blood between them after Billy. I really think that's what did it. I think she probably listened to her more before that happened. Um, and then once that happened, it was like, well, s clearly I can't trust you. Um, so I think that's why. I think that's what did it. Um, she's also the baby of the family, and Winnie was kind of raised to be the one in charge. So that automatically made her think she was right all the time. So I think that also has to deal with it. But I think a lot of it comes from, oh, you were messing around with the man that I fell in love with all these years ago. 
um, for, and you've been doing it for how long? Okay, yeah, clearly I can't trust you, so I probably shouldn't trust anything that comes out of your mouth anymore. So, I think that's why she never listens to Sarah. Um, those were good questions. And our last round of questions comes from To Infinity and Beyond. Number one, favorite piece of Hocus Pocus merch. I'm just gonna grab it. <laughs> it's right here. Timber! <laughs> it's okay. I just knocked something over. This is my favorite piece of Hocus Pocus merch. It's my second VHS that I've ever owned. Not my first one. I wore the first one out. But as you can see, it is now covered in signatures from the original cast. It is just covered in signatures. Um, I'm only missing... A few now. I've got, I've already got Kathy. I've got Emily Binks. I've got Max. I've got Ice. I've got uh, Binks's voice. I've got Billy. I have Allison. Um, I'm just missing Jay, Danny, Winifred, and Sarah. If I can get those last four on this VHS, I would be so happy. So this is my favorite piece of Hocus Pocus merch because I'm trying so hard to get everybody's signatures. Um, I think Thora and uh, Tobias will be a lot easier to get a hold of than Bet and Sarah Jessica, but hey, I'm still hoping. Um, <laughs> maybe they will have mercy on me one day. I almost thought I could have had Sarah's this summer, but if COVID, COVID was still a thing, man, if it wasn't a thing, I could have had Sarah's this summer because I went to see her on Broadway in Plaza Suite. And it was so good. It was so good. I did get to leave her a fan letter, which made me very happy. Um, but I wanted her signature so bad. I took this with me just in case. But they weren't doing stage door appearances because of COVID. So that that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing. Um, but yes, this VHS, my favorite piece of Hocus Pocus merch. Number two, if you were to recast the three sisters, who would you choose? Blasphemy! Um, <laughs> no one could replace them, but feel free to answer. Blasphemy! Um, I Sarah May asked me this in the last one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way again because we're just gonna say it's time travel. We're gonna go back in time. Say this was made in the eighties, seventies, eighties. Betty White, B. Arthur, Estelle Getty of the Golden Girls. Those three. Those three specifically. But it's blasphemy and we're not, we're not, we don't promote that on this channel. <laughs> um, number three, your first piece of Hocus Pocus merch. My first piece of Hocus Pocus merch is the v VHS that um, preceded this one that I uh, promptly wore out <laughs> because I watched it too much. So I guess this technically is now my first piece of Hocus Pocus merch because the other one is a uh, it's dead. <laughs> it died years ago. It died years ago. Um, but this is my first piece of Hocus Pocus merch, and now I am on a quest to get everyone's signatures, which I hope, I hope I can do. I really, really hope I can do that. It's, uh, it's not been easy to get a hold of everybody, but thank God for Comic Cons, huh? <laughs> so... Yeah, that's it. We have reached the end of the questions. Whew. That was a lot. Hey, this one's actually shorter than the... This one might still be shorter than the last one, because you, you guys asked me shorter questions this time. Last time, they were really long questions, and I went for a, a while. <laughs> um, so we've only been going for 54 minutes. So this will probably be right at an hour by the time I do everything. Um, those were great questions. You guys had great questions this time around. I had a lot of fun with those. <laughs> um... They were very good. Uh, not a lot of repeat questions this time, too. You guys are learning. Very good. Um, we'll probably do another one of these um, probably in January. Um, I'll probably try to make these bi-monthly now. Now that all the nuttiness is over and we don't know we don't know what's going to happen next year. Next year is the big 30th anniversary of Hocus Pocus. So God only knows what's going to happen next year. Especially after the success of 2. Especially after the success of 2. Because um, that as you guys might have seen in the uh, brief video I put up that it broke the Nielsen streaming record with 2.7 billion minutes watched. And a lot of people after that, they were like, well, if I'd known what it was going to be whenever I went into it, I wouldn't know what. Well, you're looking at it in hindsight, so shut up. <laughs> it broke a record. <laughs> it broke a record. I'm I'm not apologizing for saying shut up because I'm getting sick of it. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, 
holy crap. I mean, it, it broke so many records. It broke so many records. It's nominated for several Diz, Diz Insider Awards. Um, I really think Hocus Pocus 3 is possible. It's a lot more possible now than before. Um, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> don't hold your breath. I'm not holding my breath in any way, shape, or form. What I'm hoping for next year uh, for the big 30th anniversary is a lovely 30th anniversary DVD slash Blu-ray slash 4K ultra whatever release with bloopers and deleted scenes. All of them. Not just the ones they overlaid in the pop-up trivia version. No, 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 no. A proper go to the bonus features, click on the bo click on the deleted scenes, and watch all the deleted scenes. That includes the pool, and that includes the freaking grocery store scene. That includes everything we didn't get to see. You hear me, Disney? <laughs> Do you hear me? That's what we need next year for the first movie. Give us all of that. Give us bloopers. Give us deleted scenes. Give us behind this. Give us the documentary stuff. Like, get on it. Get on it. Time's ticking. You got till next next July. You got till next July. Move it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen next year. Um, but I'll start doing these a lot more frequently because now I have time. <laughs> um, I'm kind of... Uh, Next week is going to be another character breakdown slash analysis. It's probably going to be Mary next week. I'm um, just going to go in birth order. Got to sit down, find time to do that. Because uh, my job is actually very busy right now. My actual job, not this job. Um, Christmas on the way. Winter reading program is about to start at my library. It's about to get nuts. Um, so that's the thing. Saturday nights, please, please, please tune into the channel on Saturday nights when we are doing our... Um, Black Flame Gaming streams at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. They are, again, so, so, so much fun. Go join our Discord. Um, that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please remember to drop a like and share and subscribe if you haven't. And then comment your thoughts down below. It's free. It helps me. And what helps me helps you guys get more great content like this. Like this Q&A. Um, again... Join us for Black Flame Gaming at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Saturday nights, unless I tell you otherwise. Um, and join our Discord, the Sanderson's, uh, the Sanderson Cottage. It's a lot of fun over there. Um, we're going to start doing a lot more in there. Uh, we're still, I just cleaned up the server with uh, one of our mods on Saturday night, and it looks so much better now. <laughs> I feel a lot less chaotic and floopy over there, as Phoebe from Friends would say. Um... But that's, that's all I got. If you're a regular on this channel, please remember to drop a like. Share your thoughts on my answers to your questions down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Casey Zogelman, a.k.a. the fourth Sanderson sister, and I will see you witches and wizards later. I am